Skywalk elevator review. Uh, two. Okay. This is uh, pretty old and pretty slow and beeps a lot. Oh, points at it for that. Uh, six out of ten. I have no idea if I'm allowed to be in here, but this is the right way. I feel like I'm entering the back rooms. Dang, they closed at two today because of weather. Uh, well, the holiday ends right there, so I guess I'll just have to go down to street level. Enter through the parking lot. Ah, very nice. I mean, this goes back to what I was saying about how all American hotel rooms look the same. <laughs> but it's nice. Cool view of the town here. Or city, I guess I should say. We're trying to take the skywalk to the DTC, maybe tackle that locked door that I couldn't get through, but I'm not convinced this will work. Oh, so this is the culprit? Yeah. Oh, it is letting us go somewhere. Another Skywalk elevator review. Oh. This one's glass. It goes from two to four. Yeah. Three. At the slowest possible speed. Man, there's the transit center right there. It's so close. Oh, he's got a giant T too. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, again, points added for a real bell. All right, well, that's a... I guess it's a seven out of ten elevator because it's this glass. Like an upper level to the skyway? I what, what don't are we doing know. Now? We've crossed the street at street level. We're now at a new skywalk to the DTC. Oh, they do have those machines. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Here's the Duluth bus network redesign, which will feature some routes that run every 15 minutes. And then here comes the bus and it drops everyone out. That's so funny. Adult fit. Oh, so I have to get like a paper. Why is it clicking? I don't know. One day. Three dollars. It's so cheap. Oh, you can buy two. Also worth noting, Duluth Transit has peak fares of 150, which is double the off-peak fare of 75 cents. It literally it will only take like singles. Okay, wow, so that sucks. Oh, here comes the bus to issue our tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does this have graphic design? Whoa, it's got the lift bridge on it. I'm very happy with this. This is a very nice design. It's a pretty nice transit center. I, I just hate that machine. It just makes everything worse. They're running on a snow emergency mainline route, which is basically the two and the seven kind of run every half hour across the city. And that's Leaving the on only the thing the they run. This is the bus area. They have little bays. I, I can dig it. We love a hilly city. This one does it like Seattle, where it's very flat going like parallel to the water, but then going up each block, there's a big hill. And so whenever people say, you know, the Midwest is flat as a pancake, Duluth has entered the chat. We're trying to get across this highway to get down to the canal. But see, this is where they deck 35. This is where it's Oh, starts. this is just so bizarre, like a pedestrian ramp parallel to the buildings, like above the road. So we're in kind of a park above 35 right now. Yeah, not uh, very well lit. I don't know why they wouldn't light it, is, it up. Well, it has lights, but not uh, You guys tell me about how this would be much busier and more pleasant in the summer. Lake Superior is no joke. I mean, oh, geez, you can see the waves on there. Is that a beach? Uh, it might be. That is so cool. It's just like the ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lake Superior basically is an ocean. I think it's deep. Yeah. It's like a couple hundred feet deep. Wow. Miles, is this your first time on Lake Superior? This is. It's Welcome. really cool. It's the, just the like... The mightiest of the Great Lakes. This is the, the granddaddy of them all. There's this whole like weird trail down here with like nothing. <laughs> It's just you in the ocean <laughs> and the freight track. Yeah. Well, no, this is this is just like the scenic railroad. Oh, okay. So I don't think freight uses this anymore. I guess we'll explore that more tomorrow. I mean, we could walk through there later tonight, but... I'm just transfixed by the waves. <laughs> All right. Wow, Duluth really likes these weird little malls, huh? Yeah. This is cool, though. This is uh, Thicker's. There's a bookstore. There's... Mall. I feel like if you really like any era of 20th century architecture, this is the place for you. <laughs> You've got like this kind of art deco business here, but then downtown it's all like 80s stuff and it's really well preserved. <laughs> We're at this fancy Italian place called Va Bene, right on the ocean. <laughs> I mean, ah, it's not the ocean, I keep forgetting. It basically is. Welcome to a very well-equipped bus stop. 
that's not telling us the route. So we're, we're waiting for a bus that we don't really know where it is because they're running on their emergency schedule. So the transit app's just really confused. Google Maps is really confused. We'll just kind of wait here until it shows up. 11 minutes later. Well, I guess we give up. Maybe it came really, really early. It, it must have. Wow, it's Duluth's arguably most famous tourist <laughs> attraction. I mean, when I told my friends I was going to Duluth, they are like, oh, Duluth Trading Co. Cool sight line in the city hall here next to the rotund Radisson. And then here's the Duluth oh, library, the library, which very, is very brutalist. Very unusual. Okay. And then here's the train station. This is a good intersection if you like architectural diversity. We're trying to get into Bentleyville here. Oh, I guess if it could have closed because of the weather. Bentleyville is like this big Christmas light display they do. This should all be lights. Yeah. Well. Oh. <laughs> yes, back to the hotel. This is, just, this is just like how our trip has been going. <laughs> okay, so we had gone into this pool before and I said, I gotta get the camera. It's not literally in the pool. But... Too weird, no. But we were just exploring the hotel and you're not ready for how mid-century, how 80s this facility is. <laughs> so cool. It's the carpeted here, and then it's just a pool, and then just random arcade games. <laughs> What's with the goldfish? What's with like the balconies? Yeah, this is a hot tub. Why does it have like a flower in the middle of it? <laughs> I don't know. That one Twitter account, Liminal Spaces, like this would be prime fodder for that account. Wow. Okay, wait, this is the children's pool. So maybe the baller is a sprinkler. Oh, water feature. Oh, it's this. Do it. I think it recycles. I don't. Wait for it. Oh, it's doing oh. something. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Oh, that That's exciting. so exciting. Uh, this is the world's greatest water park. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. It's, it's mirrored. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect. This is very suspenseful. As if one pool wasn't great enough. Why have one when you can have two? An eighth floor pool as well. High up. Why are we going through the back rooms to get oh, here? Right. Oh, this is nice. Is there a, look, look at this, it's an elevator. Oh, what the heck? Wow. This is another very liminal pool, but in a more like fluorescent office kind of way. All right, we're doing a, a pool elevator Eight review. Through <laughs> Eight through 10. And the eight, the eight is just eight like, is, yeah, the eight had better days. Gone, <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I think honestly, like, this is, Miles, is this your favorite hotel you've ever seen in this <laughs> It might have to be. Oh Dubai. my gosh, eight has gets a star, because it's the bottom. It's the <laughs> Oh, it's wow. Actually pretty, it's pretty speedy. It's too. fast. It's got, it's got good power to it. Duluth industry in action. The boat going under the lift bridge. Wow. Good morning and welcome to this mall again. Will the door to the transit center be unlocked? Yeah, it looks like it. All right. We are heading on to the 11 to go to breakfast. But this is the peak only 11M. Look, the bus is registered in Wisconsin. It's not even a Minneapolis, or about Minnesota license plate. Well, so um, capital buses in, in Minnesota don't have license plates. Oh, 11M. Whoa, <gasps> potato, potato. Really, in the winter they're running one? Oh my gosh. Eli, we gotta ride one of those later today. Something I love is that every bus coming out of the terminal is required to go up at least like this type of hill. You like Hilly City, up to the right, up to the right place. I love Hilly Cities. I have to say this bus is handling them really darn well. Oh, this is a rough turn, wow. Check that out. They know what they're doing up here. Well, don't say anything your mom wouldn't say. <laughs> I don't know, that snow's accumulating yeah, for sure. Like That's awesome. You're passing another 11M. We're kind of in a more suburban neighborhood now, a little bit. The houses are less close together. No, but it's, it's, it's still like... It's still decently stop. dense. Thank you. Stop. Requested. Oh, is that modern? That's a new building. We've entered the UMD campus here. Oh, this isn't a great transit center. They force people to like wait in there. Oh no, but there's like... That's designed as transit center, maybe. So most of the day the bus ends here, but because it's rush hour, we're on the 11M and we do this extra loop that no other bus does at any other time. Miles discovered this, so yeah. I think we looked at the schedule. I always 
look for this stuff. Oh, so they're doing the thing where they kind of stop at the intersection because the sidewalks are just completely snowed in. I feel like in Minneapolis, we would have had like routes on snow detour right now. Yes. I'm kind of surprised that they're still attempting this. And we're doing fine. I mean, now we're kind of in the woods behind the neighborhood. I think there would be a nice view out that way on a clear day. This is such a cool little like little intersection, yeah. Or I guess in Boston you call this a square. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> Great breakfast from the Sarah's Cafe at Cafe Table. Ta yeah. It's a weird name. We're walking to the 13 because it's a unique, a different here. route. Here you get more traction. Uh, on the snow, I'm gonna walk behind you. We're here at the intersection closest to the 13 stop because this snow is kind of blocking the sidewalk. There's a nice little park. There is. Duluth has very good urbanity, even in what is seemingly kind of the suburb area. This must have a different, uh, different space. Yeah, I think this one might be newer. Check this out, this is Portland Square. Look at that housing stock. I mean, truly immaculate. Wow, we might as well be in Philly. I mean, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's a little condemned, but still. Thank you. Like true Minnesotans in the wintertime, we're taking the skywalk. <laughs> There's a live view of the Duluth Curling Club. Check that out. This is this is the place to be. I've never seen a curling rink in oh, real life. Yeah. For all the people who don't know how this game works, which is everyone, they have uh, these things <laughs> to explain it. And I mean, like how much fun is to watch a game here? They got like a, a bar and a lounge. And... Right. Oh, check that out. That's so cool. So then, oh. There's like this little mini drawbridge for pedestrians to get into the Canal Park neighborhood. Turns out the bus we want to take is in zero minutes. <laughs> well, Eli, it's well, a that... good thing you checked the tracker. Yeah, that... <laughs> so to explain why this bus route is cool, there's basically this massive sandbar. Oh yeah. That goes like I... all the way down the lake. There's like a seven mile sandbar that supposedly is like the largest freshwater sandbar in the world. <laughs> wow. Gillick Fire. This is the lift oh, this, bridge. This, this, this is very famous. This is the channel right here. Oh, that goes out to the lake? Yeah. And now we're on the sandbar and this bus just goes straight to the end. There's like harbors and hotels out that way. I do find it funny that the bus goes as far down as it does, but it's very like residential. It's just single house on each side because the, the spring oh, yeah. is so narrow, yeah. Probably one of the more unusual transit routes. I would say so. On a map, it's very striking. The water is very flat. So this is the harbor, right? So yeah. I got this cool little loop and that's the end of the route. I love this. What is this place again? I don't know what the name of the building is, but uh, we're going to the Northern Smokehouse, Northern Water Smokehouse. So I got this like salmon melt thing, so I want seafood. Oh, you want to see what mine looks like? This say? place is like a seafood type place. This is super good. It's like a tuna melt, but with salmon instead. How's yours? Very good. This is the Maritime Visitors Center, and these were the bridge lifts. So I guess we saw the, wait, 2.30 to 3. I don't know what we saw. It's 226. We better get off the bridge. Yeah. Run! We're about to lift it. We got really lucky. The slow lifting process has begun. Look at that. And I think it's got these big counterweights that are... Oh yeah. There go the counterweights. Wow. To me, this is just like a masterpiece in engineering. Like, this is so cool. There's the boat and the haze. I mean, it'll get here eventually. They should give us like info about the boat. She's just blasting through that ice like nobody's business. Wow. And think about it, this, this boat could go anywhere in the world, but there's an ocean. You can get out to the ocean from here. All right, well, oh, now the bridge is coming down right after it left. That was totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what if it just keeps coming down and crushes us? This is the train museum in the old train station and it closes in 45 minutes. Yep. Cool. This is really nice. 
and the plan that they ever bring back the Northern Lights Express is actually to serve this station. Oh, that would be awesome. It's in such a good location too. All right, enjoy some B-roll of trains at the train museum. I'll talk for a bit so you can see some trains. Hopefully you're enjoying this fairly unorthodox video. I just love Duluth so much that yeah, I felt the desire to kind of put this together, even though it's kind of aimless. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, you might also have the Patreons scrolling by at this point, which I won't call attention to it in future things. It'll just be text going down at the bottom of the screen at random times. That seems to be a good compromise as far as what people wanted, but we'll see. Yeah, let me know what you think. Okay, now we'll go back to like real video. Look at that, a Proterra on the bus we want. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Yeah. I've never seen Miles happen in my entire life. <laughs> oh, so much fun. These buses do sound cool. They spontaneously combust, but they sound cool. <laughs> okay, so you know how like bus system maps will have that one route that goes way out into the hinterlands and it's really fascinating? This is that route, and it's using a Proterra, and it runs like three round trips a day. And I've kind of forced us to take it. It was, it, it was too cool of an opportunity. And it's being phased out. Right, with the redesign, they would eliminate this run. So, so this just this just fell into your lap. I mean, a Proterra in the woods, how can you fight with that? <laughs> There's already only four people left, and we're still in like the urban, like kind of frequent part of the route. I mean, I do have to be honest, like this bus sounds really good. It's making very cool noises. So right here is Spirit Mountain. This is basically a transit accessible ski resort because we're still on the part of the two that has, gets regular service. And it's already like Proterra in the woods energy, which is so cool. Even out here, we're still getting cool little buildings. Yeah, there's a whole other apartment complex. There's the bus going the back, sound. and here's the loop. So we're now at the bid. It's twice a day or three times a day or whatever. This will be more just the summertime. So you see miles again. I know, but it might be gone by the summer. Who knows? Very out of focus rear window shot. Oh my gosh! 46 miles an hour in a Proterra in the woods. I don't know where the heck we are. There is some housing. Fond du Lac Apartments. Wow. That's where that person's getting off, I guess. Oh, cool. And now I think There's we're gonna... Out here, which is... Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, that's really pretty. This is the resort that they're serving out here. I think this is kind of the one thing in Whiskey out here. I don't really know. It, I, honestly, I don't know why the bus comes out here. Mile post 336. Last stop. I don't really know what we're doing here. Where are you going? Oh, that reverse out. I don't know what the heck is here. Is this like a private residence? Is this a... Oh yeah, it might be a bar. It's the strangest place to turn a bus around. I don't know why we just back down, but we're now heading out the street. I can't believe the Proterra came out of here. I still can't believe it's just like a random bar in the middle of nowhere in the snow. Well, that was an awesome ride. The bus didn't explode. It sounded cool. <laughs> Great success. Okay, we're driving out of Duluth. We're gonna go to Minneapolis after. And this is so much fun. And I just wanna say, my highlights were, I would say the, the cozy warm, like malls were really cool. Watching the ship go through and like the ice and the yes. snow was yeah, really was, cool. That was pretty cool. Taking the Proterra in the snowy woods is really cool. <laughs> you know what the common thread between all these things was? No. There was snow and cozy winterness uh, involved. Yes. Therefore, the best time to visit Duluth is December.